what's up my name is take number here for troubleshoot and welcome back to another video in this quick video i'll be going through optimization for the brand new forza horizon 5 game of course it's out now on game pass and steam etc etc so whether you got this for free as part of xbox game pass which currently has a free trial you'll see details and how to get it in the description down below you probably want to optimize it and get it running really smoothly on your computer unlike forza horizon 4 the auto optimization seemed to do a pretty good job but of course we can do better with some manual tweaking now this isn't going to be a windows optimization guide or an nvidia optimization guide if you'd like either of those if you haven't already optimized both of them you'll need to check the description down below for a link to those videos this one's only going to be focusing on Forza Horizon 5. So with that out of the way, let's just get into the optimization guide, but we'll start with optimizing a few things on Windows before we get into the actual game itself. So first of all, if you haven't already, update your graphics card drivers, most importantly, and of course Windows as well. It's incredibly simple, and you'll find downloaded links for both Nvidia and AMD in the description down below if you'd like to get there quicker. When you've updated it and restarted your PC, come back to this video and we'll continue. First of all, we'll need to tell our computer to run Forza Horizon 5 on the best graphics card we have available, which is especially important on laptops and notebooks. If you have the game on Steam, right-click the game, hover over Manage, and then click Browse Local Files. This will take us directly across to where the game is installed. However, if you have it on Game Pass, there's a different way you'll have to do this for sure. Though I won't be going into too many details there just yet, you can find the video in the description down below that'll go into depth in how exactly to get there, because you need to do a couple of things first. Regardless, when you've found Forza Horizon 5.exe, right-click it and then click Properties. Inside of here, we'll head across to Compatibility, tick Disable Full Screen Optimizations, then click Change High DPI Settings. In here, we'll simply turn on this tick box at the bottom, change it to Application, hit OK, Apply, and OK. Upon doing so, we'll copy the link at the very top up here, the folder path, and we'll head across to Start, GPU, and open up graphics settings. Inside of here, simply turn on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling if it isn't on already, and then look under graphics performance preference. Select desktop app from the drop down, and then click browse. When you do so, click at the very top so we can type here and paste in the address that we just copied. This is the folder where the game is installed for me. Then double click on Forza Horizon 5.exe, and you'll see it's added to this list here. Click options, and then choose high performance and click save. Upon doing so, it'll use the best graphics card available in our computer. Of course, if you're using a laptop that hasn't got a switch, i.e. all of the dedicated graphics card information has to go through the integrated graphics card, it's a good idea to try and play games on an external monitor. If you have one available, that'll definitely boost your FPS. Now, we'll head back at the very top left, then click Home, and in this home screen, we'll click on Gaming. In the Xbox Game Bar tab, simply make sure that this is turned off unless you explicitly use some of the features that you have here. Then on the Game Mode tab on the left hand side, make sure that this is turned on. Both of these will help you net some better FPS in game. I'll close out of that window as we're practically done with that. Now, just before we actually hop into the game for an in-game optimization, there's a couple of housekeeping things we need to get to. Number one, the more free space you have available, the better FPS you'll have, especially when you're very low on hard drive or SSD space. The absolute simplest solution is to clean temporary files that you are never really going to touch or need. Hit start and type in disk and we'll be opening disk cleanup, though run it as administrator. When it opens up, select C drive, your Windows drive, and click OK. Then we'll wait for it to scan and eventually it'll pop up with a new window telling us what temporary files we can get rid of. Usually you'll take everything in this list, but I like to uncheck a recycle bin as you can go through that manually later and empty it yourself just in case you want to restore something and I keep thumbnails unchecked as well. As I have folders with thousands of images, I don't like waiting for the thumbnails to load for all of them. So with everything unchecked except for these two, I'll click OK, then delete files, and it'll run through all of these temporary files on my computer, getting rid of them and saving me quite a bit of hard drive space. When it eventually finishes, I'll be opening it up once again as administrator if you have it installed on a different drive. For me, I have the game installed on E drive, so I'll select E, click OK, and I'll rinse and repeat the settings here although I usually keep recycle bin unchecked. OK, delete files, and wait for it to run through to completion. Awesome. Now that we've done this, let's quickly get to tasks running on our computer. Of course, the more programs you have running, the fewer resources will be available for games, especially on lower end computers. You should try and close as many background programs as possible. Hold Control Shift and press Escape in order to bring up the task manager. 
In here, you can sort by CPU, memory, and GPU in order to see where your resources are going. The more you have available for the actual game itself to take, the better the FPS you can get. So try and close as many background programs as possible, of course only keeping the ones you need open, open. Then head across to the startup tab at the very top and sort by status. Everything set as enabled here will start up when your computer starts up, slowing down the boot up time and of course running in the background until you manually close them. If you find something you don't necessarily need starting with your computer, right click it and then click disable. This way fewer programs will be running in the background, your PC will boot faster and games should get better FPS with more resources available. For the power users, you can head across to the services tab and click open services where in here we're doing almost the same thing. Sort by startup type and everything listed as automatic starts up with your computer. If you find something you don't want starting with your computer, simply right click it, click properties and change the startup type to manual. This way you'll have to open the program yourself or start it from the screen here in order for these programs and services to run. This just means fewer programs on your computer and once again, more resources. Now that we've gone through that, the final thing I want to mention is try and have as few overlays interacting with the game as possible. This includes the Discord overlay, Steam, etc, etc. On top of this, programs like Steam and Chrome do have a hardware acceleration mode, which means that they'll use your GPU more than your CPU, in other words, taking away power from your graphics card instead of giving it to the game. You can disable hardware acceleration in those programs to use more CPU over GPU, that way there's more GPU available for the game to take, and of course, better performance and FPS because of it. So that really depends on how you're bottlenecked, if you're bottlenecked at all. Awesome, so with all of those Windows optimizations and tricks out of the way, let's get into the actual game itself in order to start optimizing it. So I'll simply fire it up here. Once again, of course, you'll find related videos and other optimization guides in the description down below to squeeze even more out of your computer. On top of this, if you're having issues with starting up the game, logging in, etc., you'll also find videos tackling those issues. If you have any other issues, you can leave them in the comments down below and I'll get across to them at some stage. Sorry if you hear some noise for the rest of this video. The 11 years of rolling blackouts in South Africa is continuing, so just try and ignore it if you hear it. So, of course, I'll be hopping into the actual game itself in order to see what kind of FPS we're getting. In the top left, I have Steam's FPS counter, which is enabled through the overlay. If you don't have Steam or you have it on a different platform, you can, of course, download third party programs like MSI Afterburner, RiverTuner, etc., etc., in order to get an overlay. So, now that we've actually hopped into the game itself, what kind of FPS am I getting by default at 2K on my 1080 Ti? While driving around for a little bit, you can see I'm getting a solid 60 to 64 ish FPS. I don't think VSync's on 70, there we go. So it's pretty good, but of course, we can make this a hell of a lot better. So I'm opening up the settings menu and scrolling all the way down to video, let's start optimizing these settings here. I'm not too sure why this alert at the top keeps showing. Anyways, brightness and HDR all depend on what kind of setup you're currently running and shouldn't affect your FPS too much if at all. Resolution should obviously match the resolution of your display. Anything other than what's on the box or supported resolutions will be blurry for you. Frame rate you'll see is usually locked to about 60 FPS. All you need to do is scroll down to vertical synchronization and turn this off. This way you'll have less input lag and you can unlock the frame rate if you'd like. Otherwise you can lock it to a lower frame rate if you'd like to record using something like OBS and your recordings are stuttery at higher unlocked FPS because your graphics card's being used entirely by the game, leaving nothing for OBS. Anyways, resolution scaling should be turned off as any settings that you do in here will lower the graphics in game and then scale it up, somewhat similar to DLSS but not using the same technology. This way, the higher the setting is, the more to the right, and the more fast it appears to be, i.e. performance over quality, the less good your game will actually look, it may end up blurry, etc, etc. So I'd try and stay away from resolution scaling unless you want to play around with this last after optimizing everything else. Full screen should always be turned to on for the highest FPS and we have a show FPS over here which enables an FPS counter in game. Motion blur down here is completely user preference but I for one prefer no motion blur. This can of course raise or hinder FPS depending on what you have it set to but they do recommend having a longer motion blur when you're running at lower frame rates. Not too sure what that helps with but that's what it says on the side. UI scale and the rest of these options here are all user preference and don't have anything to do with FPS. So I'll click the save button, head back, and we'll go down to graphics. This is where we'll get most of our FPS. 
There is, of course, a benchmark here if you'd like to benchmark your FPS in between changing options, but I would prefer to just drive around in-game. Starting off at the very top, we have the preset, which obviously changes all of the settings down below it. So maybe change this to be something closer to what your PC is expected to run, maybe ultra or high, and we'll be going down into the options here to tweak everything as necessary. Do remember that this isn't a Twitch shooter and you can afford to drop some FPS if it looks a lot better and is a lot more enjoyable to play. Do keep in mind that these settings aren't set in stone so you can customize the game to look how you want instead of sitting with a not good looking mess hindering your experience. Anisotropic filtering has basically no effect on your graphics card even though it says it will affect performance though that says it for pretty much everything on this list. At least on newer graphics cards, 10 series, 9 series, Nvidia, etc, etc, this is definitely not something you need to worry about. Maybe you'll need to worry about it on lower VRAM graphics cards, but definitely not the mid and high range. Shadow quality here, of course, will have a huge impact on your CPU and GPU the higher the setting is set. Shadows aren't something you're going to be staring at all the time, so having this on low is probably better than having it on higher settings as you'll be racing past them anyway. If you like enjoying the scenery, you may want to push this up higher later, but for now, I'll leave this down on low. Night shadows I'll also have on, as I just prefer having shadows at night, though this will drop your FPS slightly. Motion blur quality, of course if you've turned down motion blur, you can turn this all the way down to the lowest setting. Otherwise, if you have motion blur on, the setting can affect your performance and of course change your FPS experience in game. Because my motion blur is off, I can push this as low as possible or as high as possible and it shouldn't affect performance. Environment texture and geometry quality down here both affect your graphics card and will have a VRAM draw texture quality especially. You can turn this option up if you have a newer graphics card with lots of VRAM. Unfortunately, there's no slider to tell you what you're supposed to be aiming for, but on lower end graphics cards, you'll want to drop this down to low or even medium. On higher end graphics cards, maybe a 1080 Ti, you can have this on high or ultra, not really having to worry about much at all. The extreme setting over here, I probably wouldn't push up to unless you have a 4K display. So I'll leave this on maybe high or ultra. I'll put it on high. Environment geometry quality should match the setting above, but of course you can change this as well. I'll put this on, say, medium, just one below the texture quality above it. MSAA is anti-aliasing, so is FXAA. These will both fix jagged edges on your screen. FXAA with barely any performance hit and MSAA with a huge performance hit. This is something you can comfortably turn off if you're not bothered by jagged edges. Otherwise, try and keep it on a lower setting as anything higher will definitely eat away at your graphics card. FXAA will make your game look a bit blurrier, but it does pretty much fix aliasing and jagged corners and edges, though it's definitely not as good as MSAA. It does use a lot less power on your computer. SSAO quality is screen space ambient occlusion and this has to do with lighting. You can usually turn this down and not see too much of a difference, though you should see a performance improvement. Reflection quality obviously has to do with reflections on cars, water, etc. This is something you'll definitely want to turn down if you have a lower end computer. I'll put this on probably low for now as I won't be staring at reflections, though I do want them to be there. Scrolling down a bit further, World car level detail. This of course will raise the VRAM requirement and use a bit more of your graphics card and CPU. So you may want to drop this down to lower settings for better performance. Deformable terrain quality. You, you won't really run into this too often in game, but of course, if you crash into something and it breaks into pieces or whatever, if you drop too many FPS, this is something you'll definitely want to lower down to medium or off. I'll be keeping this on medium. SSR quality is the screen space reflection quality. Once again, it has to do with reflections. You can turn this down unless you like staring at shiny objects. Lens effects has to do with rain on your screen, etc. This is something you'll probably want to turn down to medium. Turning it off will make the game have quite a different looking experience. Shader quality, once again, has to do with materials and lighting. This is something you'll want to turn down as it will be quite expensive on your graphics card. Particle effects quality, you won't run into too many particles unless you crash into things. So if you experience massive FPS drops, this is something you'll want to lower. Otherwise, you can leave this on probably medium or high. Finally, ray tracing quality. I don't have a ray tracing graphics card, but this is not using NVIDIA RTX. As far as I understand, it's using different kinds of ray tracing, so your experience may differ depending on what series of graphics card you have, etc, etc. I for one definitely don't like ray tracing as it only adds a tiny boost in reflection quality and lighting, whereas I'd much prefer the better FPS from having this off. 
So with us running through all of the graphics options here, you're free to lower them even further if you don't like your FPS. I for one will be re-enabling my overlay and getting back into the game itself to see what kind of FPS we're getting. So saving the settings, it'll ask me to restart and when I get back in game, we'll do another benchmark. While the game did say it was optimizing while starting up, it hasn't changed any of our graphics settings. If you paid attention to the car before, you'll also know the decal on the side has lost quite a bit of detail. It's definitely more jagged now than it was before, but the game doesn't look too different. And especially if you're focusing on the actual racing experience, it'll feel a lot smoother now than it did before. I for one will be cranking up the settings quite a bit, but I'm now sitting at a comfortable 115, 120 FPS practically all the time. It's not nighttime anymore, but FPS shouldn't differ too much from the 120-ish range throughout daytime and nighttime, giving us a really good smooth experience, especially on high refresh rate displays. Now, because this is typically a console game, FPS isn't necessarily something you need to have a really good experience. In fact, you might wanna change all your settings so the game looks as good as possible while hitting an average of about 60-ish FPS. If you're a diehard console gamer coming to PC, you're probably gonna be fine with 30 FPS so you can crank the settings even higher. But regardless, that's really about it for this quick video. Hopefully you managed to get a ton more FPS out of the game. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.